If God Almighty was not ashamed to reveal such filth and dirt, I am asking why should you be ashamed? Are you holier than God? Can you ever be holier than the Almighty? If God spoke those things, wrote those things, dictated those things, what you are seeing, reading, that is how pornography works. So I was only reading from the holy book of the Christians. I, it's not my words. In this holy book, there is a beautiful chapter, the highest form of from the Bible. For what reason? Why is he telling you all this? Now, the type of stories that you read naturally creates the type of mentality that you have. So there are cases and cases, you know, from his own writings, which we can prove that, look, this is not the book of God. He speaks about alcoholism. Because Islam says, teachers, Allah says, I'll fix you up. That's what the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu hi guys you're welcome thank you so much for clicking hope you guys are doing great so in this video Amadidat is going to be revealing or is going to be exposing some truth about the bible hmm. i'm so curious guys let's watch so she said what guarantee that i will give it suppose you enjoy and you go away and i don't see you again what guarantee is this what guarantee do you want so it says your signet means your ring and your bracelet means i had a bangle in his hand and a staff the danda, you know, rod of Moses, Asa. So the old man gave it to her and he cohibited with his daughter-in-law by the roadside and made her pregnant and she bought twins, Fares and Zara. There's a long detail about it, long story. Very spicy reading. I didn't know at one time that all these things were in the Holy Bible. I was looking for the other books, you know, called The Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition by Fitzgerald. And I got it and I read it, you know, but I did know that for two and six, 25 cents, I could have got the Bible and I could have got something more spicy than in the Arabian Nights. <laughs> I didn't know that. You must know. You see, so 10 cases of incest in the book of God. Book of God, for, for what purpose is God telling you all this? That father and daughters, Father-in-law and daughter-in-law, brother and sister, son and mother. For what reason? Why is he telling you all this? Now, the type of stories that you read naturally creates the type of mentality that you have. This is a foregone thing. If you eat junky foods, you become a junkie. If you read filthy, dirty stuff, your mind becomes filthy and dirty. And he says that. Who? Jimmy Swagger. He's written a book on pornography and he's telling us that this acts like a drug. Pornography acts like a drug. He says you get addicted to it, just like a drug, like alcohol, like drug, marijuana, you also get addicted to pornography. Addiction takes place, then escalation takes place, then desensitization, these are all his terms. I didn't know, he's made research. Desensitization takes place, and then number four, he says you want to act out the role. What you are seeing, reading, you act it out. That is how pornography works. So, in this holy book, there is a beautiful chapter, the highest form of pornography that you can think of. In my country, my government banned extracts from the Bible. It's a very strange government, very Christian. Of course, you know, it has this unjust policy of apartheid, but religiously, it's one of the most religious communities of the Christians in the world. Hmm. You know, some of the things that I can buy here, your Playboy magazine and something else like that from Kennedy Airport or from Chicago, mm -hmm. I land in South Africa and I go to jail for two years. That's how strict my government is. Very Christian -like in its morality, its ethics. Now, somebody had published a pamphlet with nine extracts from the Holy Bible, without adding, without deleting anything, nine extracts from the Holy Bible. And this was sent, somebody sent it to the Publications Board, and the Publications Board declared this undesirable, means banned. And there were two priests on the board when they banned this. But these poor priests, they didn't know that it was from their own holy book. They didn't know it. Can you imagine? Verses from the Bible, nine extracts banned. Hmm. My country, for one word, a one four-letter word, they had banned a book called Lady Chatterley's Lover. One word, one offensive word. For 20 years, the book was on the banned list. They have re-banned it. Now they've grown up now, more mature. 
this and now. I think the people are mature enough to read it. That one word. Here are nine extracts which are undesirable. We say on the same basis, you should ban the Holy Bible. But of course, you know, they, they live by it, they take an oath by it, so it's very, very difficult. But they have done the job. They've given it to us that this is undesirable. Pornography of the highest order. George Bernard Shaw, a British playwright, he says, this is the most dangerous book on earth. He says, keep it under lock and key. Your children must not have access to it. Yeah. The Plain Truth magazine, you know, the Armstrong family here, American, American. They are printing 8 million and 80 thousand a month for free distribution. The Armstrong family, plain truth. They, in one of the magazines, they say that many a censor will give this Bible an X rating. Cross. Huh. Many a censor. Book of God. Is it the book of God? I dare any Christian, I say, come, come forward and read it to your audience, to your, to your congregation. Huh. Read it. No decent man can read it to his mother, his sister, his daughter, or even to his fiancée if she's a good woman. You can't read it. If God Almighty was not ashamed to reveal such filth and dirt, I'm asking why should you be ashamed? Are you holier than God? Can you ever be holier than the Almighty? Can you be? That's what it means. If God spoke those things, wrote those things, dictated those things, which I dare not read it to you, because I know you will never forget, even in a thousand years, you'll remember, it says, Uncle Didat was a filthy, dirty fellow. That old man came here, and what, what words he uttered, not, not realizing that, oh, I was only reading from the holy book of the Christians. I, it's not my words, but you will not forgive me. I know you can't forgive me, because you make an indelible impression on your mind. It's Uncle Didat's lips, you heard the words. Book of God, book of God, that you are ashamed to utter to your congregation? He says, no. So there are cases and cases, you know, from his own writings, which we can prove that, look, this is not the book of God. He speaks about alcoholism, book on alcohol. In that he says that there are 11 million American drunkards, 11 million drunkards in America, and 44 million heavy drinkers. And he says, and I agree with him. He said, I see no difference between the two, between the drunkards and the heavy drinkers, which means 55 million drunkards, according to Jimmy Swaggart. I say, brother Swaggart, you must also add this, your social drinkers. Because Islam says, teaches, that whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. That's what the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said. So there is no excuse for a nip or a tot. So if you add those, you also, your social drinkers, 800 million drunkards. You haven't got the answer. Because your preachers, he's complaining himself that the preachers, the evangelists, the Bible thumpers, the hot gospelers, he said they are not, you know, taking sides on this problem. He said at the conference of the preachers, these evangelists, Bible thumpers like himself, he said, the conference is that somebody suggested that let us all, those who are opposed to the community, the congregation, imbibing alcohol, please stand up. And he says, nobody stood up. Nobody stood up. Which means they were all opting for drink. And they reasoned. He said, if our Lord Jesus Christ, if he turned water into wine at the marriage feast at Cana, what is wrong with us drinking? If what is good for our God is good for us. And it's good logic. Don't you agree? If it is good for your God, it's good for you. They said, no, no, no. Our friend Swagat says, he said, look, that was not alcohol, that was pure juice. You know, pure grape juice. But the other brothers of his, the general, the, the bulk of them, what you know what they say? He said, you see, this is the same W-I-N-E wine in Greek, which Lot drank and prohibited with his daughter. Same W-I-N-E wine. So the Christians now, they have no answer to the problem of alcoholism, simply because it is not in their book. The only book on the face of the earth which says, don't touch that devilish stuff, is Holy Quran. Islam has a solution to all the problems. Allah, to all the problems, we have it. We must try and save these people from the, the, the mire in which they are. 
Last June or the June before, 300,000 sodomites, Kaumi Luth, they gathered in San Francisco on a pilgrimage led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. That nation is harassing the world, harassing our people. At the present moment, out of the world, 70,000 missionaries, crusaders, 60% are Americans. I worked it out, 42,000 Americans are raising the dust throughout the world. While in their own motherland, in their own homeland, they are deep in the mire with the sodomites, with the surplus women in, in New York next door. I am told by your statisticians, they say there are one million more women than men. If every man in New York got married, there will still be a million women who can't get husbands. And of the manpower you have there, one third are gays, sodomites, call me loot. Can you imagine the mess you are in? There are 7.8 million more women in America than men. That is if every man got married, which will never happen. You know, men get cold feet for so many different reasons. Then your prison population, 98% are men. Then something happens at the weaker sex, you know. You find more widows than widowers. You know, men seem to die more. There's something amazing taking place at childbirth. As if nature is trying to take revenge on man for his cleverness. He's too damn clever. He says, right. Allah says, I'll fix you up. At childbirth, I'm told that the average ratio of male is to female is 50 to 50, 50% 50 each, equal. But in child mortality, more males die than females. Do you know that? The stronger sex, the boys, the boys, they die more than girls. Why? I don't know. Nobody can explain. We say we are the stronger sex. Who? The male. More males die in, in child mortality. Anyway, everywhere in the world, more males die than females. Disparity. Wars. More men die than women. Look, the pr proportion is going out and out of proportion. The only religion now which gives an answer to the problem is Islam. But they laugh at you. They make a mockery of you. So you're Muslims. <laughs> How many wives have you got? <laughs> How many wives have you got? I say, you fool. This is the solution to your problem. You don't listen to us. Don't listen to Allah. Then you simmer in your soup. And the simmering in their own soup. Whew. All right, he really said a lot about Christianity, about the Bible, and what it was majorly about. The major, you know, factor of this whole discussion was the the pornographic side. He said the Old Testament is full of pornography. The Bible has pornography words and all those things, and it was like, how can it be the word of God if all these things cannot grow you spiritually? So he's just trying to let us understand that. The Bible cannot really be the word of God because you cannot even preach that kind of verses to your loved ones, to your children, because you don't want them to fall victim of that or behave as such. So it was like, why will there be images or, you know, or worldly things in the Bible that is God's own Bible? You get it? So I understand him trying to explain and trying to let us understand why he doesn't totally believe the Bible to be the word of God because of the things he has encountered in the Bible, you know, the things he have seen in the Bible and whew, that was a deep guys. That was that one I, I, he really spoke his mind about the Bible and that was really really deep. And let me know your point of view guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next one.